Hello and welcome to another Purveyor of Light Photoshop quick tip. Uh, today we're going to actually stray away from the, the normal technical tutorials and we're actually just going to be going on what I like to call the, the, the theory or the flow to why I edit a photo a certain way and what I look for uh, and, uh, and then that's how I edit a particular photo. So here we, we've got a, a, a nice example. Uh, this is Travis Air Force Base in California. And uh, the uh, photographer here went through, you know, a lot of trouble of getting the aircraft, you know, in position, uh, the people in formation, and all uh, nice at attention at the, uh, on the tarmac. Um, but being a photographer, being a, a creator, uh, I always look at how can I improve things, uh, and this is where it gets into a little controversy with some people. Uh, I'm not looking to sit there. If you don't agree in photoshopping images, you know, I'm not here to convert you to do that. To me, it's a vital part of my final image. Uh, that's where the creativity comes in. Uh, that's where I feel I enhance a photo uh, and give it its maximum value. Okay, so with that said, the, I'm going to get you through my mind's thought, what I think about when I look at a photo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop up a new image here, uh, and I'm just going to look at it. And I go, what's happening right now? Where's my eye being drawn? Well, my eye is definitely being drawn to this area here. This area here, this, this thing in the tarmac, that is driving me nuts. My eye keeps going there. I want to look at the rest of the photo, but my eye is just constantly going over here. The second area where my eye is being distracted is on the tarmac itself. Okay, right here, this discoloration in the tarmac, as well as here. Those are two areas that are distracting my eye. Okay, and so I want to address those. Okay, because I don't want that to be the distractor for the eye. I want the composition, the aircraft, the people to be the front and center, to be the image, okay? Not these casual that have no value uh, in the picture at all. The next thing I look at is the sky itself. The sky is just absolutely boring, right? Um, I guess the only thing we got going for this is it's blue. Uh, but other than that, uh, you couldn't ask for a more boring sky. And uh, so maybe we'll go ahead and put a little interest in the sky. The last thing I look at the photo is the people, okay? The people are just so small in the frame. Now, he used a wide-angle lens to shoot this, obviously, to, to get all three aircraft and everything into the frame. Uh, and... I would just like to see the people more prominent in the frame. And so that's something I want to address in the photo as well. Okay, so I've got my marching orders now that I've analyzed the photo. Okay, and I just do a quick scan to see if there's anything else distracting my eye. All right, and I come in and I go, well, this fire bottle... Uh, I'm sure it's there for safety, but I'm just going to go, ah, that's just not uh, adding to my my image as well. Okay, so now I have my, my idea, I have my game plan, okay? And now I'm going to address each one of these images, uh, issues, one by one, and work to a final product. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Throw this layer away, and... I always like to work safely. I'd like to duplicate the layer just for safety purposes. I hit Command J, J to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to turn off the bottom layer for safety. It's just there for me to safety in case something goes terribly wrong. All right. So the first thing I see is, okay, this, this, tarmac line here this yellow line uh, it's got to go so i'm going to go ahead and take my 
lasso tool and I'm just gonna lasso around it and I'm gonna go up to edit and content aware feel and let's say what happens see okay it looks really good uh, Photoshop has done an excellent job of doing all the hard lifting for me so there we are the before and the after now I think you can see now that we're doing these we're removing the distractions you see how your eye is drawn to that yellow line? And now that when it's gone, we have removed that distraction. Okay, so that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and take select these two layers, and I'm going to merge these uh, two layers. Okay, so now we've corrected one distraction from the photo. And again, we're not changing the basic composition of the photo. We're not changing the message of the photo. We are just simply removing things that distract from the image itself. Okay, so the next thing I see is, of course, this area here. So I'm going to carefully come in and come around and we'll see how Photoshop does with this one. So edit content aware fill and boy i tell you what photoshop is really taking all the hard work for me it's done a great job already removing that so we're going to accept that and uh deselect and now i'm going to select those two layers because i'm happy with the two results of that and i'm going to merge those layers down okay and then i have this area here so i'm going to go ahead and throw a Lasso around that area, and again, content aware fill. And Photoshop works its magic, and you go, Wow, it's really fantastic! Uh, Photoshop has just done a wonderful job of doing this. Now, I know there's a little bit of ink affections of the lines and so forth, and I normally would come in and do some blending, uh, you know, to make that better. Uh, but for here, I'm just showing you my basic workflow of how I work through for looking at an image, trying to improve it, okay? And that, in my opinion, is the difference between somebody that takes snapshots or somebody that creates images, okay? So, again, I'm not a photojournalist. I'm not reporting the news and saying this was, you know, on six o'clock news this is not a historical piece this is about taking an ordinary snapshot and making it a photograph making it better okay so now we've taken care of our distractions I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the image again okay so now I have it so let's uh let's just turn around and see it okay there's what we started with and there's where we finished right now. I think if you turn around and you look at this, I think you can, you can see that your eyes are drawn. They're distracting your eyes to that. And so that's why I removed them from the frame. Okay? They serve no purpose other than the distraction. Okay? It's no more than if I would have found a piece of trash, uh, you know, in the frame. Uh, I'm just simply removing the eye distractions. Okay. So back on. The next thing we have is, and this is again is me. This this photographer used a wide angle lens, and that's so he could get everything into the frame. And I understand that. And then when that happens, it turns the perspective. The people, uh, you know, become ant like and very small in the frame, and everything gets compressed. Um, so. I want to try to improve that, okay, by changing the perspective, okay, and that this can only be done in post, okay. You can't do this in camera, so this is one example why I'm a proponent of post-processing being just as important as the first part of getting it in the camera because there are just sometimes you just can't. Here I'm going to take this and I'm going to go the people, all right, so I am going to grab a lasso around the people. You 
And if I can manage not to chop anybody's head off. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste that onto a, another image. Another layer, sorry. Okay, so now I have a I have people all on the layer all by themselves. Okay. And now I'm going to revert, turn them off, and I'm going to revert back to the layer below. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, I'm going to just lasso the people. And then I'm going to let uh, Photoshop work its magic. And uh, do some more content of where to fill. It's becoming quickly my my most favorite tool in uh, in Photoshop. So there we are. Now the people have been removed on the tarmac, and we have the people up on their own layer. Okay. Again, we haven't changed anything as far as the composition or anything else on that. So so now that I have the people on their own layer. Okay. I want to uh, now. S select these two and flatten them together all right so now i've got my people on their own layer and this one here now what i want to do is i want like i said i want to bring the people more attention onto them and i want to bring them front and center in the frame but i don't want to change the composition of the shot so in my opinion this one can be easily done with uh free transform and all we got to notice is the formation. They're keeping this gentleman centered practically on the C5 in the back. As long as I keep that perspective, I think we're going to have the original composition intact. So I'm going to uh, Command T. And now I'm going to carefully transform this by enlarging and bringing the people more dominant in the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm bringing it in and again my, my main thing is to make sure that the composition does not get changed okay and I'm pretty happy with that all right so there we have okay and now if I have any blending to do I can take a put a layer mask on this layer and I can do some quick little loose little blending all right if I paint in black okay with a soft brush very slow uh, and just blend it in so we don't have any harsh blending lines in the photo just quickly run around and blend in the areas and again if I was doing this for myself I would surely take a lot more time uh, than what I'm doing here but uh, for, for demonstration purposes here I'm just trying to speed through this okay Need to bring back more of this aircraft here. Blend it in. Oh, and there I forgot about that fire bottle there too. So we're going to take care of that real quick. Okay. All right, little here. Got to get the landing gear back on. Bring back the shadow of the aircraft. And again, I know this is the boring part here, but basically, you know, this is what you're looking for is to blend the, the two layers together. Okay. And then uh, Okay. So that's not looking too bad. And so now if I uh,
There's the before. And there's the after. The before. You can see how in the frame, uh, how small they were done by the lens because of the wide angle lens. And then, you know, again, the frame, the composition is good and everything, but I think by doing this, I can bring them more prominent into the frame. Okay, and this could not be accomplished in camera. Okay, and this is why I'm a proponent of post processing being just as important as taking the actual photograph. Because this is an example here where uh, changing the perspective, in my opinion, makes a better photograph. Okay, so again, we have gone from there. And you can see the distraction is the line, the discoloration of the tarmac, how small the wide angle lens made the perspective of the people to what we are now. The people are now more prominent in the frame. It look, actually looks more balanced. Uh, we still have the same exact composition, okay? Uh, and we still have the three aircraft in the background with the control tower in the distance. Okay, so... Um, I look at the last thing. Now, normally, I would say the control tower is an annoyance to me because it's off-center, and for some reason, it's distracting to me. But for this purposes, I'm going to leave it alone, okay, uh, because it's part of the photographer's original composition. Okay, so, again, we have turned around and gone from this to this okay and so the last thing and this again is totally optional but I'm just looking at the sky and I'm going hmm just a little bit more interest I don't really want to change anything you know but I just want to add a little bit of more interest to make the photograph more interesting so I'm going to do that I have a library of uh, of, of clouds if you don't do this you need to do this I created a folder on my hard drive and I have clouds every everywhere I go if I see clouds I snap a photo of it okay and this way I build up a library of different clouds okay storm clouds sun clouds sunny days blue days hazy days uh, and so I recommend if you don't do this you need to do this build up your own personal library of clouds Okay, so I've already selected a cloud picture here that I think that would work for this one. And I'm going to drag it into the photo. And I'm going to drag and drop it in. Okay, and one thing about clouds, okay, is we, can, we don't care about perspective, proportions. Uh, you know, we just transform it until we like it in the frame. So command T to, to free transform. And we'll start with that for now. And now what I wanna do is I wanna change this image to a black and white, okay? We don't need the color because I don't wanna have to have the headache of trying to blend the blues of that day versus this day. So I'm gonna take a black and white adjustment layer and I'm going to make it a clipping mask. And so now this layer below is black and white clouds. So now all I need to do is change the blend mode, okay, from normal. And then I can, I can go through and see what looks best, okay. And I'm going to say lighten looks pretty good, all right. Let's try screen. I, screen, that's not too bad, too. Let's try screen. All right. So now I look at the frames, and now I can do any positioning on how I want the sky to be in the frame. Okay? Don't worry about all the excess clouds. We're going to mask those out. So I'm going to say, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm happy. I'm going to put a layer mask on the layer. And now using a, a black brush, I'm just going to remove what I don't want 
to be visible in the frame. And so I just simply paint that away and I can uh, increase the flow here so it'll go a little quicker. And I just simply paint away the clouds or hide them. I'm not actually painting them away, but I paint away the clouds that I don't want in the frame, okay? And just going to paint a little bit in there. Okay. And maybe I'll drop the opacity a little bit so they're not so strong. And again, this is up to taste. But I'm going to say that's about right for me. And so there we are, okay? I have taken the basic photo and I've removed the distractions on the tarmac and we've brought the people in the formation to a more prominent portion of the frame. We've left the basic composition the same. We enhanced the sky by just putting a little more interest in it. So... Here's, oops, wrong one. Dink. All right, so the before, okay. Try to get that in there. So the before, and the after. The before, and the after. I think if you look at it here, you can see the reasons why I did what I did. And I did not distract away from the message uh, or the composition of the original image. Okay. Now, in my opinion, I just took a snapshot. Okay. That was nice and had potential. And then I took it up a few notches to make it a better image. Okay. So hopefully you found this useful. And, uh, until next week, you guys take care.